Hey everyone, I got uh, two new gas laws for you today, gay loose X law and the combined gas law. I'm hoping that you see that gay loose X is very similar to Boyles and Charles, how we've already solved, and the combined gas law might look a little intimidating at first, but it's really just two problems in one. So um, as long as, you, if you can do one problem like gay loose X, you can do a combined gas law problem. So the gay loose X law looks at um, the relationship between temperature and pressure. So that means volume and the number of particles are constant. So we're not changing how many particles are in a box and we're not changing the size of the box. Um, and what gay loose X law says is temperature is directly proportional to the pressure. So think about that. If I increase the temperature, that means the average kinetic energy of the particles increases, which means ultimately they're moving faster. And if those particles are moving faster in the same size space, they're gonna collide more more often um, with the size of the container. So as the temperature goes up, there are more collisions, so the pressure goes up. Same with the opposite, T goes down, P goes down. So because this is a direct relationship, um, the graph is pretty um, straightforward. As the temperature rises, my pressure will also rise. So we get some nice points on this graph. Try to do better than the last video and make a nice straight line. Nope, that's worse. One more try. A little better, let's just, this is what I do in, when I was in math class. If you make the points bigger, then the line always fits. All right, so anyway, direct relationship as one goes up, so does the other. So this picture, I'm gonna be honest, is from winter time. Um, we're pretty good right now. I think on uh, Sunday we're gonna get some snow, but um, I have this light on that the um, my back tire has a pressure of 28 psi 28 pounds per square inch and i want to know should i put more air more particles in my tire should i fill it up so here's some um, actual information the temperature on saturday was 21.1 degrees celsius and the tire pressure was 32 psi which is what most tires are recommended um, what will the tire pressure be sunday if the temperature drops to negative 3.9 degrees celsius so first thing ah i see celsius what do we have to do we have to change it to kelvin so right away 21.1 degrees celsius plus 273 that gives me 269.1 kelvin and then negative 3.9 plus 273 gives me, oops, I lied, I'm sorry. I'm all over the place today. Let's start this over. This one, negative 3.9, that gives me 269.1 Kelvin. And this one gives me 294.1 Kelvin. I apologize, I put both in so I could be more efficient and then it took longer, okay? Um, notice I'm not dealing with the Fahrenheit because it's easier to just go from Celsius to Kelvin. Um, so let's let's talk relation. Actually, let me list, I gotta list this out because I don't wanna keep reading the word problem. So my first temperature, 294.1, and it's gonna change to 269.1. My pressure when it was the 294 was 32. PSI, and so I wanna know what my new pressure is. So let's talk relationships. My temperature between T1 and T2 is going down, it's getting colder, which means the particles are moving slower um, in the space that they have inside the tire, so they are going to collide less, so I expect my pressure to go down. So we look, who doesn't have a date? Well, right now pressure does not have a date, so they go out in front. And we are gonna multiply it by the ratio of the temperature. So essentially we have two choices, guys. We can take 294.1 over 269.1 or the other way around, 269.1 over 294.1, right? Those are my two choices at this point in time. Um, and our ultimate goal is to get a new pressure and I want that pressure to be smaller. So when, I'm, when I look, I see a fraction here, and this fraction right here is bigger than one. How do I know it's bigger than one? Because there's a bigger number on top. So will multiplying 32 by a number larger than one, will that give me a smaller pressure? Or this guy is gonna be a fraction or a number less than one, a decimal. Will that give me a smaller number? Well, let's, I think when we have a smaller number on top, we will get a number that is smaller. So let's do, 269, 269.1, 294.1. 
When I take 269.1 divided by 294.1, I get a decimal point nine one four nine nine. I'm going to multiply that fraction by or that decimal by 32. So essentially, this fraction here is getting multiplied by the 32, and it gives me 29. And I'll just round to 0.3 psi. I guess if we're doing sig figs, which I know we're not really stressing about right now, but let's just go with 29 psi to match the number I started with. So I have 29 PSI. Double check yourself. We always want to monitor for meaning. We said pressure would get smaller. Did it go down? Yep, 32 to 29 pressure is getting smaller. If we had accidentally chosen this fraction, we would have noticed that the pressure would have gone up. And that, that all that means is you got to flip who's on top bunk, who's on bottom bunk. All right, we'll try to go through this one a little faster. Car tire has a pressure of 199 kPa and 20 degrees Celsius. Ah! So that's 293 Kelvin. What will the pressure be if the temperature goes up to 80? Ah! Turn that to Kelvin. So in this problem, my temperature is going up. That means the particles are moving faster, 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 so they will collide more with the walls of the container, um, so I should get a higher pressure. Who doesn't have a date? Pressure, so I put 199 kPa, and we're gonna times it by the temperatures. So our two choices are we can do 293 over 353, or 353 over 293. Which one will make pressure get bigger? It's going to be the one with the bigger number on top, so 353 over 293. In my calculator, I take 353 divided by the 293, I get 1.2 with some decimals, times that by 199, and I get 239.8, let's just call that uh, 240, and we match the unit because we're looking for pressure, so 240 kPa is my answer. So hopefully you felt like Gay-Lussac's felt really similar to Charles and Boyle's law. Now let's look at the combined gas law. So in the combined gas law, only the number of gas particles is constant. So we're not changing the number of moles, the number of particles of gas. That's held constant. So everything else is changing. And remember, temperature must be in Kelvin. So this practice, I, I don't think you have in your notes. I want you to just watch. Don't write anything down. Just watch. Okay, we have a five liter balloon. That's our volume. That's a terrible color, let's try this one. It's at 275 tors, that's a pressure. Oh, let's try that again, 725 tors. And a temperature at 272 Kelvin, that's already in Kelvin, so that's good. What is the new volume, so question mark for the volume, if the temperature is changed to 298K, and we have a new pressure of 647 tors. So notice there are two things, well really ultimately three things are gonna change, but we know what the temperature is doing, we know what the pressure is doing, we wanna know what the volume is doing. So we're gonna treat this like two separate problems. For the first part, I want you to just pay attention to the relationship between pressure and volume. So in this problem, pressure so I'm ignoring temperature. Pressure is going down from P1 to P2. What happens to volume? Well, if I have less collisions, that means that it must be a larger room, right? The particles have to travel farther before they collide, or I remember that the president and the vice president are the only two who ever disagree. Okay, we, it's all about volume in this problem. So I want you to pay attention to volume the whole time. So we start with the one without a date, which is volume. And we are going to multiply that by the pressures. Well, I want volume to get bigger. So I need to take my 725 tors on top and my 647 tors on the bottom. So I take 725 divided by 647 and I get 1.12. I times that by 5. And my new volume is going to be 5.6 liters. So essentially what's happened here is the pressure is telling volume to get bigger, and it did. It made it go from 5 to 5.6. Now I'm going to look. Let's bust out a highlighter. Maybe I'll use purple. I'm going to now look at temperature with the volume, 
as my number two calculation. Okay, so notice in both of the calculations, the one thing that stayed the same was the volume, right? I'm doing volume with temperature and volume with pressure because volume is the thing that we're missing and we're looking for. So let's look at what temperature is doing. Temperature is getting bigger, so that means the particles are moving faster, 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 which means they're pushing out the sides of the container. Remember, picture those kids moving really fast in a bounce house. So the volume is gonna get bigger based off what the temperature is doing. So we want volume to get bigger. Here's the difference. I'm not gonna start all the way at the beginning. I'm gonna start with where we left off. So 5.6 is my new volume that we're using and I want it to get bigger, so I'm gonna use the temperatures and put 298 Kelvin on top and 272 Kelvin on bottom. So when I take 298 divided by 272, I get 1.0955, and I times that by 5.6, so I'm just timesing 5.6 by this fraction, and I get a new volume of 6.1 liters. That's my final answer. So in this example of the combined gas law, both of the, pr the pressure was trying to make volume increase and the temperature was trying to make volume increase. So ultimately, it basically got increased twofold. It went to 5.6 and then it went to 6.1. Sometimes, if you have a combined gas law problem, sometimes things will compete. For example, maybe the pressure made volume get bigger, but temperature actually made it want to go smaller, like the temperature decreased, so the volume was going to decrease. So they can compete with each other sometimes, and you'll see some of those in your practice problems as well. So notice, really, it's not. it looks scary at first, but the all we're doing is a problem here, right? This was one problem, and this was the separate problem, and the reason they're connected is because we use the answer from the first part to start the second problem. That's all you have to worry about. All right, let's just do one more before you go and try your practice and your exit ticket. So we have a 46 milliliter balloon, that's my volume, at 1.15 ATM, that we know ATM is atmospheres for pressure, and 300 Celsius. Oh, also I think you have this one in your notes, so feel free to, to do this one with me. Ah, we gotta take 300 degrees Celsius plus 273, that gives me 573 Kelvin. What is the new temperature, that's my question mark, when the volume changes to 96 milliliters and the pressure drops to 0 0.87 atm? So the one we care about the most in this problem is now temperature. So let's start with the, the temperature and the volume. In this problem, the volume is going up, right? The container is getting bigger. What does that mean the temperature has to be doing? Well, everything is a direct relationship except president and vice president. So the, the vice president and the treasurer agree. So if the volume gets bigger, the temperature has to get bigger. So we take the one without a date out of those two combos, which is my temperature. So I'm going to take 573 Kelvin. And I'm going to times that by the volumes. I can either do 96 over 46 or 46 over 96. Well, which one will actually make the temperature bigger? The one with the big number on top. So I'm gonna take 96 over 46. When I take 96 divided by 46 and times that answer by 573, I get a new temperature of 1196 Kelvin. Perfect. Now let's look at pressure with temperature, right? We always pick temperature because that's the one that we have our question mark for. Um, if we notice, the pressure in this problem is going down, which means the temperature will need to go down, right? Everyone agrees has a direct relationship except for president and vice president, volume and pressure. So if I have less collisions, it's got to be because the particles are moving slower, which is a lower temperature. So that is the priority right now. I want to make my, this temperature go down. How do I do that? Well, I can either do 1.15 over 0.87 or 0.87 over 1.15. Well, if I want temperature to go down, I need to choose the smaller fraction. 0.87 on top, 1.15 on bottom. So 0.87 divided by 1.15 gives me 0.757 times that by 1196, and I get my new temperature, my final temperature of 905 Kelvin. So this is a great example where they were competing volumes like, no, date someone taller, date someone taller, and made something bigger, right? And then pressure's like, no, date someone younger or shorter, date someone shorter. And so then we brought that back down. 
ultimately, I want to know who won. If our final temperature was 905, overall temperature went up. All that means is that volume had a bigger influence on the temperature because it ultimately went up. Um, but clearly, if it was just volume, say it would go up to almost 1200 and it didn't go up that high. So that means pressure was kind of holding it back um, and it didn't raise as much as it wanted to. So hopefully that makes sense um, and you're going to get lots of opportunities to practice Gay-Lussac and the combined gas law. Check your answers when you're done practicing and then try see if you actually know what you're doing with the exit ticket. If you need help, I'm here if you need me.